Well, today this little beauty is sitting up on the bench. This is a 1986 Honda Spree 50cc two cycle scooter. And he's got siblings. Two more siblings, in fact. There's a black one. And then there's kind of a junker red one in the back there. They're all complete. Um, the red one was in some sort of an accident. I bought these in their current condition. Non-running. I did have this one running for a little bit, but I had a really hard time starting it. And so... For all intents and purposes, we will just say that all three of these aren't running. I'm working on the red one because it's the most promising of the three. If I get the red one up and running reliably, I will move on to the black one. And as I go, I will use parts from the third one uh, as needed third one does have a running engine, or the engine did run before whoever owned this before me decided to kind of pull everything apart. So there are going to be things missing, but there will be usable parts, and so when something is suspect, I will be able to swap out parts as needed. So if you're interested in this type of content, feel free to stick around and join me on this journey. So one of the first problems I have with this one is that both the Kickstarter and the electric starter are bad. The Kickstarter gear is all chewed up and it just doesn't mesh well with the driven gear. Um, and then, and I'll pull the cover off and show you that in a minute. And the starter, the electric starter, it, it binds. And so right now it doesn't even want to move. So, keys on, all you're hearing is the relay firing, it's actually on the other side, that's not the relay. But nothing's happening. So, uh, I think I'm going to get the Kickstarter swapped over. I have a good one on the black one over there, I'm just going to swap them out, because the black one has a good electric starter. And so I just need to get something going so I can start testing for spark and compression and all that other fun stuff. Okay, so I took that cover off and here is that gear, the kickstart gear. Uh, I think I called it a half moon gear for obvious reasons. And you can see the teeth are very nice and defined and in good shape up here. But down here they're practically non-existent. And these teeth run against this worm gear back behind here and what that does is thrusts this in that sorry in that direction and what it does is then that interfaces with these pins on this gear which is called the driven gear and that's what spins over the engine but as I took this apart, well, I got lots of loose stuff in here, so I'm going to have to tighten everything up. Um, the um, This is the uh, little starter cog. Same type of thing happens where the starter gear spins. It's got this little spur in here which which runs against this gear, and then that centrifugal force from this, there's a spring inside here which actually forces this gear to come out and interface again with the driven with the driven gear and fire that over. But this guy gets stuck and I don't know if it's going out or if it gets jammed or what but I just um, moved it a little bit and I don't see there again it's just not turning over so I think that starter may be dead or dying, so that's going to have to be addressed eventually. It did spin for me initially when I first pulled this apart. You can see a ton of wear on this belt. I'm curious if this is even the correct belt. 
uh, for this application because that is a lot of wear. And just like, you know, look at this, pieces are coming off. So I'll probably need to get a new belt for that. Alright, so this is what I've found so far. I already pointed out the spur gear and it's just getting hung up. And so I might be able to get it to run. If you help it along, it tends to want to go. It actually takes takes two hands. If I push the starter button and then move it a little bit, then it'll go. So I, I think I can rebuild that starter. And uh, I looked on eBay and for some reason these starters are ridiculous. Like $175 for this little starter. I should have an extra one on the uh, junker in the back um, and hopefully that one works. Uh, but first I'm going to pull this one out and try to clean it. Alright, before I get too far ahead of myself, I was getting ready to take the starter out and I thought to myself, well let's just start with the basics first. I wanted to check to make sure I had spark and then I'll check the fuel system. I do have spark. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you guys just because it's kind of an awkward setup here, but the plug isn't in, so I shouldn't have to worry about fighting compression. So, just need to find a nice. spot to hang this. You see that spark? That might be a little too close. You might have to take my word for it, but there's a spark there. I also have a feeling that when that, came, when that spark plug came out, it was super wet, and that's after sitting for a day. Um, so, I suspect that um, I'm flooding, and I'm hoping that cleaning the carburetor and the oil injector will fix that problem. So, that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to pull the carburetor off, take it apart, clean it. Okay. Here's the carburetor. Um, so it, I had noticed that it had some type of an electronic something attached to it. I've never seen that before. This is a little bit newer than what I'm used to working on. And then it's got its own, a second, you know, here's the regular needle and slide. It's got this little secondary one. I'm guessing that's for the, uh, the oil um, pump, which uh, the injector pump, which is this thing back here which you can't see that guy um, I should probably do a little bit of reading up but I'm gonna go ahead and take this carburetor apart brush off some of the big stuff off of it and then drop it in the carb cleaning solution non-adjustable carb um, float which can be troublesome at times this one is a little high maybe causing some flooding everything's really clean I was hoping to find something obvious. Rubber needle. Spring still works. It was one turn out when when I had it here, so I just need to remember that for future. 
going to pull this gasket out and reuse it. There's a jet here in the middle of the oil injector, but I think it's pressed in, so I'm going to have to just leave it. <clears throat> I guess I better pull this tube off. It's pretty hard. I might have to replace it. Someday, I'll get one of those cool, heated, ultrasonic cleaners, you know, but no idea when that's going to be. Man, that bowl is squeaky clean. I'm amazed. Try not to ruin this rubber seal as I'm removing it. All right, so the I took out some of the gas and it's not looking too good in there. So I need to drain it. Um, the type of petcock that's on this kind of runs on a vacuum. Um, and I, I don't claim to know how this works, but I guess the, the movement of the um, gas and air mixture into the cylinder creates a vacuum on this line and when this line has a vacuum on it then it uh, pulls open a diaphragm that lets more fuel flow into the float um, so unfortunately well, the only way I have to put a vacuum on this line is to do it by mouth so I'm sure as soon as I post this video, somebody in the comments is going to be like, you know what, there's a lot easier way to do that. Alright, I'm going to drop down the lift and take a look and see if I got all the gas. Now all the gas is gone, I'm going to go ahead and top up with some fuel that I keep for my other Hondas. I hate these new gas cans, they get gas everywhere. Okay, so I got the carburetor and the oil injector removed and cleaned. Um, give me my best bet, I guess. Get this thing running. Um, the only problem I have right now is, even though these guys are clean and pretty um, pristine, uh, where they go is filthy, and I'm trying to not get any of that filth inside the mechanism for the oil injector especially. So the, the carburetor mount is kind of up and away from where all the filth accumulates so it'll be easy to clean but I gotta get down in there and clean that up a little bit just so I don't contaminate this oil injector. And This injector was interesting, I've never worked on one before because this is really the first two cycle motorcycle that I've dealt with but um, it is not 
able to be disassembled. It's riveted together. So I'm just kind of going on faith that it's going to work. I'm pretty sure it works just because when I took everything apart I had oil come out on this end and that's the discharge end of the pump or the injector or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I think it's working. And if it isn't working I can just disable all of that and run premix in the gas tank. I just want to try to avoid that if possible. Alright, so now I'm going to get these back. I'm going to clean up that area, get these attached, and get everything kind of buttoned back up again so we can start test firing this guy. All right, I cleaned up that surface and the area around it just so I don't drag any dirt into the crankcase with this oil injector once I insert it. It was kind of hard to get out. It's going to be hard to get back in, but I'm going to do that now. All right, I'm going to try this with uh, a drill first just because since it's only kickstart, I want to make sure I don't want to kill myself. So this ought to work. Probably give it full throttle here, see if we can get her to start up. Well, that fired up a little bit more uh, <laughs> readily than I had expected. I did use some engine starting fluid. Um, let me get this back on. The reason it flew off is because the engine took over, and so then it was going faster than my drill was going, and so it spun the nut off. Let's do that. Let's try that again, and maybe just give it a little, a little bump to start it instead of, and maybe I won't give it full throttle this time. We ready? Put her in run. Alright, so we still got some fuel delivery issues, but this is a good starting point. Alright, I got it off the lift, and I put the kickstarter back on. I think I can reliably get it to kickstart now. We'll give it a shot. It is the next day. Um, I kind of let everything cool down, so this is a cold start. No batteries in it right now.
still going to need a lot of carburetor tuning. I tried to take it out last night and it bogs on any type of throttle. Uh, but um, the fact that it runs and it fires up on the first kick is very promising. I also did verify the operation of this oil pump down here. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't feeding the engine straight gas. So, so it does work, and so that's good. All right. Well, I think this, uh, is, as far as I'm going to take it, I'm going to put it on the market and try to sell it, maybe for a couple hundred dollars. Um, it revs pretty good. I can get it up to about 20 miles an hour, but then it bogs down. And I think the problem is that I, I believe the main jet on that is just too big. Um, so I think it's flooding. What I did was I opened the drain on the carburetor um, and let it drain while I ran and I was able to get it up to full throttle. So it's either the main jet and it's flooding or the other thing is the float bowl uh, may be, or the float inside the float bowl may be too set too high and it's not an adjustable float so I wouldn't be able to do that but the thing is if if it was a float issue I think I'd, I'd, I would get overflow and I think it would die in, while it idles which it isn't doing. It's only dying at full throttle I think I'm flooding it with too big of a jet. I've got the fuel screw turned all the way in so I'm not adding any extra fuel um, another issue might be this um, electronic <coughs> choke may be staying wide open, which would also keep me from going to full throttle. Um, so that's a big possibility as well, and I don't know how to troubleshoot that or anything. Um, if this doesn't sell, um, I'm going to sell it and let you know. I'm going to let the potential buyer ride it around and see the issues with the throttle. Um, if it doesn't sell. I might dig into this deeper, but as it is, I've got all the plastic covers ready to go. I'm going to get ready to button this guy right back up and call it good. Well, I couldn't resist, and so I ended up tuning it up all the way and getting her put all back together. And so now she rides really well. I've got a small fuel delivery issue. I think it might just be a dirty fuel tank. So... Um, I'm going to have to take the petcock out and kind of clean that up, but um, I can get this consistently up to 30 miles an hour on a flat road, which is really good for these old 50cc two-stroke deals. So I'm going to try to set up a camera, and I'll take you guys for a quick ride.
All right, there she is. I apologize for the terrible footage uh, riding, but those tiny tires and the bouncy suspension combined with me trying to ride with one hand and hold the camera with the other hand kind of all contributed to that. But uh, she runs really good. So uh, I think that's going to wrap it up for this one. Uh, it's the fall right now. If I put it up for sale right now, I probably would only ask for about $300 for it. If I wait till the spring, I'll probably ask about $400. So, we'll see. I mean, I might put it up just to see if it'll go. I could use 300 bucks to go towards other projects. I'm still debating on whether or not I want to proceed with this one. I think it's got a bad motor. Um, th it's got no compression, so... Um, I don't know, the jury's out on this one. But if I do decide to work on it, you'll see another video come out. Uh, so that uh, pretty much does it for this one. So uh, thanks everybody for watching. Go ahead and leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you think about this video. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.